Recently, I read an article in a magazine. A urologist presented a case of a patient with erectile dysfunction whom he had diagnosed with a venous leak. The venous leak or veno-occlusive dysfunction means that blood cannot be kept inside the penis during the initial stages of an erection. Blood supply is good, but as soon as blood enters the penis, the penile veins drain it from the organ. So erections don't happen. While reading the article, I thought, man, this guy has it all figured out, because I have not. Does he know something I don't? We'll see. My name is Stefan Bundrock. I'm a urologist and sexologist myself. In this video, I am guiding you to the frontiers of what we know about the venous leak. Firstly, who is affected by it? The easy part of the answer is everybody who gets damage of the smooth muscle in his cavernous bodies. Because the veins of the penis only shut off if there is enough pressure from the inside. The veins are located beneath a firm envelope called the tunica albuginea. Pressure from the inside will flatten them against this envelope and they will stop draining the penis from blood. So any kind of tissue degeneration will make it harder on the cavernous bodies to expand. This is the case in aging, penile fibrosis, after removal of the prostate for cancer. The more challenging question is, why are young men diagnosed with this condition? They should be on top of their game. Why is the penis not working? For the time being, nobody really knows. Diagnosis is difficult too, because it is usually based on duplex ultrasound and injection of muscle relaxing agents into the penis. You know, alprostadil, trimix, etc. Research has shown that a diagnosis of veno-occlusive dysfunction based on these findings is wrong in a high percentage of cases. Therefore, duplex ultrasound is not recommended for the diagnosis of the venous leak. It has to do with overall relaxation. If patients can't relax because, oh boy, now he's going to stick that needle into my penis. Oh, this is embarrassing. And all kinds of similar thoughts it will trigger a sympathetic reaction of their autonomous nervous system. The sympathetic nerve tells them to fight or run away. In neither scenario would erections be helpful, so they are suppressed. The cavernous bodies will contract and this can be so pronounced that one can't override it with the medication. It has been shown that repeat testing may yield totally different results, also redosing of the medication everything that is needed to achieve a maximum of relaxation. What's fascinating about the cavernous bodies is that their default state is contraction. I mean, this is completely the opposite of what one would expect. Because usually, muscles are relaxed at baseline. When cavernous smooth muscle becomes active, it starts to relax. This is a key concept. Inability to relax will result in venous leakage. So a high sympathetic tone will trigger venous leakage. Psychogenic ED with performance anxiety would be one of the causes of high sympathetic tone. But I think there is much more and a lot of things we don't have a clue about. Nitric oxide is essential for smooth muscle relaxation. This system's antagonist, which causes smooth muscle to contract, is known as the rho associated kinase ROC system. Overactivity in the rock system will keep the cavernous bodies contracted. 20, 30 years ago, there was a lot of research going on concerning measuring electric activity inside the cavernous bodies. There were problems with translating the results into daily clinical practice, standardization, interpretation of results, and so on. So for now, it seems no one is following this path anymore. I think we have to start this research again. Maybe with the help of artificial intelligence, it will be possible to come to meaningful results. The answer lies within the cavernous bodies and the tunica albuginea. It is here that we must investigate to understand the causes of venous leakage. I am convinced of that. The veins are a dead end. Still, venous surgery is performed. But I mean, the results are not good. Most patients are satisfied immediately after the procedure. But after a few months, they are back to square one. I recently started treatment with radiofrequency in order to reinforce the tunica albuginea. 
Maybe Bodox could provide some answers, we'll see. But we must not forget that there is also such a thing as arterial insufficiency. This may also add to the overall picture. So we need better tools to assess erectile dysfunction. Not all patients have an effect from Viagra or Cialis. The rate of non-responders of such medication is around 30%. Why is that? So you see, while we have the means to help the majority of men with erectile dysfunction, there is still a significant percentage of hard-to-treat cases. Veno-occlusive dysfunction is difficult to treat and to diagnose. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Ich weiß, dass meine Videos auch viele Menschen in Deutschland erreichen. Anfangs war Eurochannel zweisprachig, aber nach einer Weile erwies sich das als nachteilig. Daher habe ich deutsche Videos vor ein paar Jahren ausgelagert. Sie befinden sich nun auf meinem Kanal Urologie.